if you are an aspiring makeup artist and uh, you're considering taking makeup artists as your career or as, as your second job so this video is for you okay hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is chi as you guys already know if you have been watching my videos i am a professional hairstylist and makeup artist the at the beautician chi today's topic is very very interesting you guys because i've been getting a lot of emails about this topic you guys i think i have a lot of um makeup artists on my page a lot of you have been sending me emails asking me a lot of questions about this whole topic makeup artist career mm -hmm. so i just decided to just do this video to tell you guys more about makeup artists as a career okay so i will start with the first question which is i've um i've been doing hair and makeup for more than 10 years now you guys so i can talk on this topic literally like here to share with you guys my experience um, i've had a lot of experience both good and bad so i will start with the first one first of all the first question is is makeup artist a million dollar career <laughs> okay depend on the country you live in you guys it depends on the country you live in so you can actually make a living doing makeup okay it depends on the country you live in the reason why i said it depends on the country you live in is because if you live in uh, nigeria for instance okay let me use nigeria as an example let me use nigeria for, for instance okay if you live in a country where you can like your startup capital is not gonna be like a lot it's not gonna cost you a lot and you can actually get loyal staff when i mean loyal loyal staff to work for you then it might be a million dollar career okay when you get bookings you kind of have staff that you're gonna like um do the job together so as in essence you're gonna be like um gaining more you're going to be getting more because you have a lot of stuff in your shop okay um like on a saturday which is the busiest day for makeup artists on a saturday or even some weekdays and uh, say for instance you are the most you are very popular as a makeup artist like you're very famous okay and then you get a call for a job okay so if you live in that country whereby you can actually book like 10 people on a Saturday or more than that on a Saturday, like 10 brides or 10 um, celebrants, okay? And they, you can book them and then send your your staffs to them, You're making more money than when you work by yourself, okay? In the UK, um, if you, let's say for instance, you have a shop, um, it's so hard because the most difficult part might be getting the space for you to work in the UK people are not loyal people are not loyal people nobody want to work for any nobody want to work for small business and I mean small business like if you're just starting off nobody want to work for small business everybody prefer to work for like big brands it's so difficult to get loyal staff to work with you in the UK so you might end up working by yourself so the thing is this even though you're very very popular very very popular as a makeup artist like get your you know what i mean your followers one million followers you know you're very popular at the end of the day you might end up being at one place at a time because you know what i mean you don't have staff even when you try to like get other people to even get people to work with you on the day it's even very difficult everyone like people don't want to work i don't just know but it's just so difficult so you might end up working by yourself so no matter how famous you are you know what i mean so you might end up still doing one person on a saturday if if, if the booking is for all day or maybe two 
Two, if the booking is like, it's not for all day, maybe just like one-off makeup for the bride. But at the end of the day, if you're still doing one-off makeup for the bride in the morning, one-off makeup for the, for the bride in the evening, you're still going to end up getting almost the same amount for the all day if you stay in the place. So at the end of the day, you're still going to make the same money on the Saturday. So you might not be making more. So in essence, what I'm trying to say is making more money as a makeup artist depends on the country where you live. Okay, so... The next one will be, do not be after the likes and the followers on Instagram. You know, so many people are after the likes and the followers. The truth is this, you might even get a lot of like and followers. And those people are not potential clients. What I mean is this, most of them might not be living in the country where you live in. Most of them might be living abroad. They just, they just follow you because they like your work. They might not be your potential client, okay? They might not be your potential client. They might be giving you the like, the followers, but you might not be making that money. Okay. So at the end of the day, going after the like and the followers already doesn't 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 actually make sense to me. Cause I've done a few training where most of them will be like, oh Chi Chi, um, do you know how I can get the likes on Instagram, the followers? The thing is this focus on your job, okay? Focus out on focus. Focus on making your job better. Focus on the quality. Focus on improving the quality of your job. Okay? Because the quality of your job really is going to bring you money. Because let's say for instance, that one follower that you have is your potential client. And at the end of the day, they come to your, to your page. There's no good quality image. There's no, your work is not really like top not. So, so the mind they might not even book you so if your if your job is not a plus they might not even book you at the end of the day so what does it profit you if you get so many likes and your job is not good at all so focus on your job improving on your job improving on your service your branding and all of that okay focus on that more the likes will come the job to be honest is more important than the likes the likes are just by the way Okay, because God, this is not makeup artist is not the same as selling. When you're doing buying and selling, obviously you can always ship to people. Like so, that means your one million followers can actually be your potential client because you can always ship to them. You can always ship the goods out if they make their if they place if they place their order. You can always ship the product to them. So it's not the same because this is all about service. You want to. You're rendering service and in this case you're working let's say you're working by yourself it might not even be you might not be be able to you know cater for all of those clients the next one will be branding 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 is very important as a makeup artist so or as any professional you want to brand yourself you want to have your website which is very important you want to have good camera okay you want to make sure you have your professional social media account okay make sure you don't post trash on your social media page okay so don't post rubbish always try to post quality image and good um the best of your work okay i have i've i made that i made that mistake when i was starting off when I was starting off, I end up posting rubbish pictures because uh, I just want to post pictures for posting sake. When I just do, when I just, uh, when I finish doing people and uh, maybe they're not even dressed properly, like I tied the gele and uh, their top is still on. You know when you have top like this and gele on, I just want to take the pictures anyway, just because you want to post it. At the end of the day, your social media or your website will look trashy. You know what I mean? It's not going to be like, nice and popping because you have these unnecessary pictures there so even if you do even though if you do a bride guys if you do a bride and the person is not fully dressed like maybe the person is not even wearing like a dressing gown you know maybe just tying wrapper or just or maybe just tying so well or if the person is not that presentable 
do not just post pictures like that because i'm telling you guys from experience you want to post picture because you want your fans to know that you're working so they can book you but at the same time you could destroy your brand because then people are not going to take you serious because when they go to your page there's so many up and down trashy things pictures that are not clear these days guys when i take a pictures even when i go out like for jobs and i take pictures and um when I get home and I notice the pictures are not clear or they are blurry or the lightning there is not clear, I just don't post. Bright or not, celebrant or not, whatever, I just do not like posting stuff like that. You don't want to post trashy things because you just want to post pictures. Because at the end of the day, if a potential client comes to your page and you only have one picture and that picture is good quality and uh, very clear and they can see your work and they can see, you know, that you're actually that and they can see that you actually know what you're doing they can book you because of that one picture instead of one million trashy pictures okay so branding is very important i'm telling you guys from experience you know if you're just starting off you have to make sure you build your brand and make sure everything you post is quality do not post trashy things just for posting sake you know watermark is very important because uh if you have watermark on your pictures and then uh, you know people kind of use them on their whatsapp or share them on their facebook or uh, that can bring you clients because people might see your work and they kind of recognize your work when they see it anywhere because of your branding you know your watermark so to say it's very important you don't put up anything on your website or on your social media that doesn't represent your brand so make sure you don't post things that doesn't represent your brand okay deleting old works okay okay let's say for instance uh, when you're starting off you have you put up quality picture quality image but the truth is this those pictures you think are quality when you first started off or when you think those pictures that you think are your best work your best work when you first started okay after like years you will notice that you don't even like those work or they're not even up to the standard that you want to like you want people to see okay always go back and delete your old works it's very important that you go back and clean them up clean all your pictures up clean your social media your website and everything and make sure you don't have those pictures again because sometimes people cannot scroll back and they can see your work like you're not so good work like when you're starting off so you can have those pictures because you're starting off that is your best at the time when you're starting off when you're starting off that is your best at that time but later on you'll find out because with makeup with makeup job you kind of learn from experience and the more you do the job the more better you become so you, at the end of the day you don't want to still keep those old pictures you know what i mean <laughs> if you want to charge a good reasonable amount for your service as a makeup artist you want to make sure you are using good brands because uh with clients you would think they don't know anything but they can tell when you use cheap brands okay so when you use cheap products because uh at the end of the day people are watching you they want to see what you're using on them so if you charge good money and you're not using good product that might put them off they like they might be like oh she charged a lot but she don't even use good brand you know what i mean so invest in good products use very good products and uh, make sure that everything you're using is very 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 good quality don't use do not use cheap products well if you're starting off and you don't have a lot of money you know what i mean you might start with cheap cheap product to start with because at the end of the day even when you're starting off People don't even pay that much for you to kind of use that <laughs> good product on them anyways because people cannot look at you because you're starting off they don't want to pay a lot okay they don't want to pay a lot you might use this cheap product but as soon as you kind of get yourself together and you're ready to go and you can build you build you've already built your confidence make sure you change your box and change your product and use good quality products okay Client um, bookings, okay. Um, when you booking a celebrant, yeah, or a bride, it's always important. I would say, from my own point of view, 
to just do just the celebrant alone or just the bride alone reason being that um, sometimes when you try to do bridesmaid and bride they get in your way and you end up finishing late so maybe you're starting with a with a bridesmaid before you get to the bride you're already running late you end up rushing the bride or the celebrant so most time when celebrants book you and, and they ask if you can do their friends sometimes i don't like doing friends when i'm doing the celebrant or bridesmaid when i'm doing celebrant because bride or bridesmaid when i'm doing bride because they cannot get on your get in your way and uh, at the end of the day you're even tired when you get to the bride and just not that good it's not advisable this is why you charge the bride enough for you enough for the day just so you kind of concentrate on the bride or on the celebrant because you don't want to be doing so many people on the same day just because you want to make extra money this is why brides pay for your service brides pay for your service because uh, at the end of the day there's this concentration on the celebrant you know next one will be makeup trials okay so a lot of the time when people book for makeup and uh they want you to give them to offer them trials trials most times people have trials most times the celebrants have to pay extra for their trial the bride have to pay extra for their trial because at the end of the day you're using your time and your product you know the time you're using on them you might is you might use it for something else you might use it for other things so you're using that time and you're using the product on them for the trials so that is why you have to charge for the trial especially when they have not even booked or paid their deposit you know you don't want to waste your time at the end of the day then another thing we try is this day trials is this i've learned from my mistakes okay when people come for trials make sure they come during the day okay let them let make sure they come during the day trials anytime in the evening don't really work out because at the end of the day you need natural light the person need to see the makeup in cold light like in daylight when you finish the makeup so it's always good to kind of book a trial section during the day okay and uh another thing is about tri another thing about trials these days yeah when people come for trial there's always this thing they do they end up coming for trials with their brows not shredded their brows are still like full you know and their hair is not neat you know what i mean if you're coming for a trial it's always if you're coming for a trial at least i'm not saying do your hair before you come for the trial but at least make sure it's tied in a nice clean bun so there's nothing like rough on your face because sometimes when you do trials and the hair the hair is not looking neat it's not tidy you know what i mean you can't even see the final look you can't even see how the makeup is looking because uh the face is done and the hair is not done you know what i mean then the the part of the bushy brows is this yeah when some people come for trials like potential brides come for trial i always like to ask them to trade their brows okay because if you don't trade your brows I will I will I'll be left with no choice and to use a razor on the brows you know so if you don't want you to use a razor make sure they trade their brows because some people come for trying and, and they'll be like oh I don't want you to touch my brows I'll just just walk on the bushy brows and just just for me to have an idea the thing is this it's a waste of your time to come for trial and your brows are not threaded and you know a lot of makeup artists to trade your brows because at the end of the day you're asking the makeup artist to work with your brow without touching your brows like cleaning your brows your makeup is not gonna look that nice you know what i mean unless you have this clean nice brows natural some people's brows are naturally like nice they don't even need to swear trade or do whatever their brows are just clean like so so yeah in that case then that would be fine but make sure they trade their brows they come to you nice and ready for their makeup not for coming to you with some kind of you know face that is not even ready for trial 
because at the end of the day guys they will never like the makeup because one their hair is not tidy the bushy brows are there you're working with the bushy brows you're trying to conceal the brows you know the makeup will never look good it will never look good the try is gonna be epic fail okay another one will be consultation okay so consultation is apart from the trial consultation is also important because with the consultation part that's when you ask the person their their we can that's when you you guys have a chat you ask the person about the entire wedding day the theme of the day how many times they will be changing you try to ask the person about their skin if they have any skin problem you know you know what time the wedding is going to start you make sure you have a note a paper just so you can put them down or you can jot them down on your phone you can use the note section on your phone to kind of jot them down because you need to know what time the bride needs to be ready for charge because that's what you use to calculate your starting time then you want to know the bride the skin texture or if they have any skin problem or like if there's any consign with the face or with the foundation because some people say they break out with some product so you need to know all of those informations that is why you guys need to have a chart and you know how many times they are changing well which you know know the color of the day so you can work on the kind of look they'll be going for and you want to know their personality you know if they are very very late if they are you want to know their personality if they are laid back kind of person if they like this popping makeup you know the one would be hygiene okay as a makeup artist yeah you need to be very very neat and clean make sure your stuff are packed very properly very very neatly because uh this is makeup okay this is the special this is a special day this is someone's special day there's always gonna be camera pictures you know things going on you don't want to turn up with some dirty like makeup kit and then everywhere is messy then you open there it's so disgusting so hygiene is very important make sure you disinfect your product make sure you wash your product make sure you store your products really well make sure you pack, package them really nice when you're going for makeup job make sure everything is so so neat and well arranged you know you want it to look tempting when you get there people are like oh i want to get my makeup done because everything is so nice and you know glamorous <laughs> i'll be dealing with difficult clients god some clients are very very difficult okay so the way you handle difficult clients is this be extremely nice extremely extremely nice because uh if you notice they're a bit difficult just be nice to them make sure if they're trying to like tell you what they want or trying to be like oh i love my brows like so i love the glow look like just like be like okay yeah if you want the glowy look oh, we do the glowy look don't be like forcing and say no glowy look is not good you can't have glowy look on your day or you can't have matte face on your day the thing is this you try to advise but don't push it don't push push try to advise like oh don't you think uh, what about if we do the matte look because matte look my it's gonna last better than this one you know just be very calm when you try to advise don't be push push don't push them <laughs> okay because you can come across like really really arrogant or fussy or not nice when you try to do that you know just try to be nice listen to what they have to say listen to their own idea you know just calm be calm and listen to their idea like what online these days at the end of the day you want your client to be happy if you try to like tear them off you know you might come across <laughs> you will come across as um arrogant or they might just don't like they will they will just don't like you you might even finish the makeup and be like oh i don't like it you know i don't like it so what are you gonna do this is why you have to listen to them if they don't want bright lips they don't give them bright lips they don't want bright shirt, they don't give, they don't want brows don't give them bright they don't want foundation don't do night foundation you know they don't want try to advise but well, if you don't want foundation girl don't give them foundation you know <laughs> some of some clients want their foundation to be lighter than their skin tone you know what i mean so and you will be like oh this is not your color You're like no but i want this color this one because they want to be lighter than they actually their actual color 
this is very very this is very very common okay so <laughs> so try to work with the color they want and make sure it's blended you know so just try to work with um with them you know because a lot of them are so difficult they want to hold the mirror when you're doing makeup you know what i mean you're doing makeup and they're like holding the mirror in front of you and you're like mm, okay you don't even know what to do because at the end of the day they are distracting you and then some of them you add them to sit up like so they'll kind of sit and they are pressing their phone like so and you know when you're doing makeup the person is supposed to be looking at you like this facing you like so okay so you just tell them nicely if they can just look forward because it's always a struggle you guys this part is always a struggle dealing with clients with because some of them they're just they're just looking down you're actually doing makeup and somebody's looking down you cannot do the brows you cannot contour the face if the person is not facing you like so you know if the person's face is not like this you're not seeing the proportion at the end of the day your contour is going like so when you finish because you know so you just have to make sure because this is the difficult part this part is so annoying if you're not patient if you're so impatient you're gonna fall out with your client if you're not careful you're gonna you'll be you're gonna fall out with your client because the client will always be client you know they don't some of them do not listen to instruction you know sometimes um it's always difficult because um a lot of the time some of them they'll bring to you this filtered instagram pictures and uh, they will like want you to do the look you know sometimes people are like oh i have the look i want to do and then when you're like okay can i see the look and they show you the look it's snapchat filtered picture and i'll be like i can't even see nothing all i'm seeing is blurry face like blurry face nothing there all i'm seeing is lipstick and the brows there's no color there i can't even see no shadow color and you want me to do this look like this is not a proper picture for you to even show me that you want this look you know what i mean so people bring filtered pictures to you and want you to kind of recreate the look and you don't even know what color is on there because everything is filtered up and they're like can my makeup be like this and i'll be like okay you know what i mean it's very difficult actually because um um sometimes some of them will tell you this is how they, they want their makeup to look and to be honest maybe the the facial structure won't let their makeup be like that or maybe their skin you know what i mean because for you to kind of have a flawless finish for your makeup to be flawless you have to start with a flawless canvas i know you're gonna kind of if the person have um problem skin you can still kind of you know pancake it put concealer and still make it look nice but at the end of the day sometimes it looks good in picture but in real life it's not that flawless you know so people want to see their face the way the the way it will be the way they saw it on those instagram pictures they see on the internet filter pictures they want their face to look like that in real life they, they, but the truth is this is not the same those pictures you see people don't actually look like that especially when they are overly overly filtered people don't look like that but they want you to make it look like that in real life okay so i always tell people when they're like oh i want my face to look like beyonce i'll tell them like okay we'll try we'll see what we can do you know that's it we'll try we'll always i'll like i'll just tell them don't worry your makeup is gonna come out nice okay and we start don't be like oh no you don't look like that your face is not gonna look like that what do you mean how do you no girl no <laughs> so this is a difficult part this is the very difficult part because people want to show you things on the internet and they want you to do the same and they don't actually have the skin the, the skin texture the skin texture is not the same as the picture they are showing you you might not achieve that with that kind of skin but their skin is dry so you have to kind of use like a lot of um you know what i mean a lot of natural radiance cream underneath before the foundation you know so it all depends for instance you're working with a nigerian bride and some of them have this gele they don't want they have this picture of how they want their gele to look like and they are kind of send you this picture this is how my gele to look like this is how my gele to look like and girl on the day when you feel the gele is work like it's not even good you can't even tie the gele the gele is not the quality is not good at all like 
you're not going to perform magic on the day if your gele is not good gele quality always matter gele quality matters a lot for you to achieve any style the quality matters a lot so you let them know that quality matters a lot not the gele itself not the tying of the gele but the quality so some quality you can't even tie them properly they're very 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 they don't even have they don't stand properly when you tie them so the struggle is this some of them lightning the dressing room is not good you know and uh, you can't even walk you can't even do makeup in the dressing room because the lightning is bad this is why i always take my light with me because you never know how the hotel is going to be you know so always take your light with you well always take your artificial light with you just in case the lightning is not good okay so some of them don't even have a dressing room and uh this is the time for you to change their makeup maybe in the hall there's no dressing room for you to guys change so you end up changing somewhere you know that is not even comfortable for you to actually do makeup let alone time good gele so and another thing is this and uh, some family members when you're trying to change the bride the second look you know the second look and uh they'll be like rushing you second makeup is a struggle like the minute the bride just come in just to change come and see family members they're like can you hurry up can you hurry up the bride needs to go the bride needs to go and they've been telling you that's okay the one you've done is okay and i'll be like do you want your bride to just go out with half face done like i've not even finished and you're like it's okay she just came in now but you can't even say that for it's gonna be in your mind you know <laughs> you can't even say that you're just gonna be like okay i'll be finished I'll be finished soon. You know, that's the difficult part of being a makeup artist. Very stressful. Another thing is this, most of the time you get to a client and um, you guys, you guys arrange for you guys to start the makeup like five o'clock or seven o'clock or whatever time you guys schedule for the makeup. Girl, you get there, they're still sleeping. And then even sometimes I get to the hotel and the bride, they're not even there. They didn't sleep. In the hotel the night before so you girls have to wait in the hotel on for the bride to arrive then when she arrived you guys are already running behind schedule you know you don't even have enough time then you're gonna rush you know the makeup and the hair or whatever so that's a struggle at that point when you're rushing you won't be happy because you know you're on time you came there on time but they delayed you and now you they are rushing you you know what do you do nothing so that's the struggle with makeup at its career because you cannot control how the day is gonna be like this is why i don't really care about trials because at the end of the day people come for trial on the day they come for trial they are more relaxed nobody's calling them so they are like this they stay like this for their trial so on the day friends are calling them left try they are calling the dj call especially when they're not brand like, like 50th or whatever kind of birthday they don't sit still they don't even start on time so to be honest try don't really make any sense to me because it's not the same because if you're not gonna st if the client is not staying still is the prior trial might even look better than the actual day you know what i mean so this is why uh trials sometimes don't really make any sense if the day don't really go well as planned you know so another one will be booking um payments okay for the price you you charging it all depends on the price that you're happy with so you always have to charge the price that you know that is worth your while you know what i mean so you don't really have to charge the price the other person is charging because at the end of the day you want to charge a price that is worth your time you know what i mean so yeah pricing price list make sure you have a price list just so you can always know that this is a price you charge for this kind of job okay the client calls you for the booking and you guys agree on the booking make sure you send an invoice guys always make sure you use send your client invoice invoice is very important i use paypal invoice is very good actually very good and you can kind of state the service and then state the terms of condition and you can request for a part payment which is not refundable 
guys i've learned from experience before i don't like collecting deposit like a lot of deposit because i just don't want to finish spending the money before they before the day is closed for instance when people are booking like six months or nine months in advance nine months in advance you know so i always collect like maybe like little money say for instance i just collect little money just for deposit but i've learned my lesson nowadays it's easier for you it's better for you to collect half of the money because at the end of the day people are funny they pay you little money for deposit at the end of the day after like you book them for like six months then one month before they're like oh my sister is just came from africa she said she's gonna do it for me she's a makeup artist and you know why i mean the little money you collected for the deposit doesn't really what your the time you're gonna lose the money you're gonna lose for the day because potential clients have been calling you for the day and you'll be saying no to them that you are fully booked you know what i mean and then somebody's gonna cancel you a month before or even some of them will cancel you a week before or two weeks before you know what i mean so therefore if you collect half of the money which is not refundable then you know at least if they cancel you like two weeks before you know their money is not refundable which in most cases none of them will cancel you anyway even though their friends or their cousins offer them makeup you know they'll be like mm, no i already paid for my makeup you know what i mean so collecting half of the money is very very important do not be like let me just collect 10 pound or 20 pound for deposit and then they cancel you after the six month booking they cancel you you know <laughs> then your day is wasted you're gonna be like <laughs> Then there's another thing again when it comes to booking, it's always good to send them invoice because when you state the service, the time, people are people are funny. Sometimes they will change, they will try to tell you this is the time we agree, this is not the time we agree, this try to kind of argue with you with the timing and the, the price or whatever, you know. So that is why it's always good to use invoice stay the time stay the service stay the close and um, starting time stay the starting time and the finishing time so both party can see they can read the terms and condition and they can agree and you can make the payment and then you guys are booked okay okay or, or maybe on the saturday you, you don't have a job that you like don't have a job that you have to go out maybe you're, you're in your studio and uh, people just call you on the start they're like okay yeah I'm, a, I'm available just come i'm available then you just they just turn up and get their makeup done on the saturday this is what most of them do maybe they do the makeup on that day and it's actually re looking really nice you know what they do god as soon as i get from the next day they text you like 10 days they said book me january 1st march 2nd and december you know february days and they're all saturdays Try not to book them because at the end of the day, you don't want to book party guests on a Saturday, at least not in advance. Most times I prefer to book party guests when I know that I'm going to be available, when I know I'm not going to be going out for makeup. You don't want to book party guests like way in advance, like three months in advance. What if your actual celebrant, what if the, what if the actual celebrant calls you or if you have a bridal booking? You know how people are like. If you cancel them, they'll be like, oh, I'll book you six months ago and now you're going to cancel me. So this is what you should do. Tell them you're going to get back to them one week before or two weeks before. At least one week before you already know your schedule for the next Saturday. Then you can be like, okay, now I can do you. Now you can come to the studio. Now I can do you. Especially when you work by yourself. You know, if you have girls that you work with or you have staffs, then yeah, you can book them one year in advance because at the end of the day you can still go out to do the proper the proper celebrant job and they can now come to the studio and your girls or your staff can do them do not book them way in advance do not book them six months in advance girl no get it together another wall would be time management as a makeup artist you have to know how to manage your time very well that is why you have to know the time the bride need to be ready or your client need to be ready so you can calculate the starting time because clients have this thing of when they tell you what time they want to start their makeup okay so they don't act you don't actually tell them they are trying to tell you what time so it's good for you to ask them what time do you want to be ready for so you cannot tell them the time you should start the makeup okay 
time management is very important because otherwise you're gonna be late and then make sure you pack your box a night before the makeup kit should be packed night before you know or even two days before i pack my my makeup kit weeks before because at the end of the day i have a uh, this is why you have to have a uh, different makeup for people who come to the studio or to your house or whatever and people who and when you're going out okay and have your one your one for your personal use because i've seen a lot of people use the same makeup they use they use on their clients on themselves so at the end of the day on the day that's when they'll be packing up their makeup like no have a different one for yourself like i have my small makeup kit where i have all of them all of the things that i use on a day-to-day -day basis okay so you always have to have your box you know so you don't end up putting your hand in your makeup kit taking this taking that no at the end of the day you're gonna forget some things and you're gonna get to your makeup job and you're not gonna you're gonna be looking for stuff because you didn't pack properly pack night before have a different kit for going out for people who come to you and for yourself that way you can manage yourself properly pack a night before when celebrants want you to come to them they actually they actually think they're paying for the day but they're actually paying for two days because at the end of the day if you have to go for a, to a bride you have to pack and prep a day before you're actually planning packing your stuff a night before you know what i mean so you're working twice you know because the time you're using to pack your stuff is the time you can use for some of the things so that's why the people charge a lot people people don't realize why makeup artists charge a lot because they're thinking it's just the time they spend on the applying the makeup because sometimes you have to like think as well the look you're going for so your mind is working your brain is working and you're actually trying to see you're trying to make sure everything goes well so you're actually your brain have to be like working at the same time as your hands you know what i mean so it's a lot of pressure that is why we could charge a lot so guys getting to the client later than the time you schedule is not good it's unprofessional you want to get there on time even though most people are not, most clients are not always ready just make sure you get there in time you can just sit and chill you know sit and chill while they are getting where they are getting themselves together than for you to be rushing or uh, driving really fast because you're running late you know what i mean so yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> the next one will be buying all makeup brands out there guys when i started doing makeup i was so excited to so any free time i go out i just shop for makeup i just buy every makeup on the internet in the shop I just go buy everything in the market and even bring new brands out there i just buy you know but then you end up realizing that you don't even need that much you know what i mean if you have a brand or you have a product that does the job that does the job you don't have to buy every new stuff out there because at the end of the day you, you don't even need a lot you don't actually need a lot especially when it comes to shadows because i have a lot of shadows at the end of the day I have to kind of start giving it out when I kind of know that this is the this is the makeup I need. I end up giving it out to cousins, you know, to my students when they come to learn. I just give them out because you realize you realize you don't even need a lot. So at the end of the day, if you go out buying every damn stuff, every damn makeup out there, you end up that like you're not actually making money. You're actually spending more than you're actually making. You know what I mean? So cut, cut. You know those buying of every makeup you see out there you know <laughs> so it's very very exciting when you are kind of start doing makeup like very new <laughs> you want to buy everything because you're excited you just want to try everything there so just buy one thing that works and just stick with the stuff that work the only time you should change is when this the one you have is not in the work so you'll be on the lookout for stuff that will work or stuff that will do the job not when you have stuff that actually works you actually you want to buy another thing like you end up spending more money than you're making celebrity makeup okay guys when i started doing makeup i was like i want to do celebrity clients celebrity clients all i want to do is celebrity clients then at one point i came to realize that most people contact me like celebrity client of some you know this uh, photographer they contact you for this shoot with this model maybe she's famous or whatever but the thing is this those people don't pay 
okay celebrities most of them they are their management will contact you and they'll be like uh it's not gonna be a paid job it's gonna be free a few celebrity contact me and they'll be like their management will contact me and be like oh this person this person is coming to the uk she's gonna be needing makeup for this day this day are you gonna be available and then at the end of the day they'll be like it's not gonna be paid but you can they can give you credit and can use your pictures i'll be like you know it's different um if you don't have family i have a i have family like i have kids if i have to go out i have to pay for child care you know so that is not even including transportation i still have to pay child care regardless so therefore i cannot just leave my leave or just go out because i want to get credit you know what i mean because at the end of the day some of them they don't you don't actually use the pictures immediately they will tell you they're gonna send you pictures and some of the pictures are airbrushed you can't even use them on any day even when you take pictures they ask you to wait for a while before you post it because they want to use it for this magazine the magazine needs to be out before you actually use them so the thing is this some of this celebrity you see out there you want to do their makeup some of them build your portfolio though because some of some people want to book you because you've done this celebrity or that celebrity but it might be a good thing but if somebody is not paying me for my service i'll be like mm, i don't know if i can actually do that because i have bills to pay and uh my in my own case because i'm a hairdresser i can actually do other things with that time you know what i mean if i'm just like a regular makeup artist and uh then that will be fine but i actually make hair like i can actually book somebody to make the hair within that time and make good money so you know another one would be have a second job okay the truth is this yeah if you have other things you do you won't be like crazy if makeup job don't come because you have other things that you do and this is why you can actually make money if you're getting money from left right left right east west the money is coming in so you have so many streams of of income you're not just depending on makeup you know you can actually work and still do makeup on a saturday because the truth is this like if i don't get makeup job on a saturday i won't be like crazy or like feeling down or whatever because i can always do hair you know you can always do something else i can always do hair so this is why sometimes when people are like i just want to learn makeup and they don't do nothing apart from just their makeup mm. so you just have to have different streams of income if you're trying to make money doing makeup unless you have other streams of income you know what i mean if you're posh <laughs> you know but if you're not mm -hmm, you have to have different streams of income another one is working with other makeup artists when you work when you meet a makeup artist or some colleague out there try to be nice okay try to be extremely nice to them so do not try to be like mm, I'm better than this one I'm not better than this one try to be nice because that's when you can share ideas with people because if you're trying to be like I'm better than this person I'm not better than this person then you're not gonna it's not gonna get you anywhere when you meet makeup when you meet your other colleagues out there try to share idea try to like be friendly just be friendly in general even though you don't want to share idea just be nice friendly you know don't try to be like oh i'm better than you i'm better than you <laughs> or just don't try to be like oh this one is just tying off so i'm not going to talk to this person because she's just tying off you know because the truth about make the truth about makeup job is this you can be starting today and you can be here like higher here and the person starting today can be higher than you because with makeup job yeah you might be running today mm -hmm. the, at the end of the day the next person is going to come up and be higher than you so makeup uh, makeup job is not stable people kind of rush one person at this point like some people kind of rush this person they start rushing you rushing you rushing you rushing you and later on they start rushing the other person maybe the person don't even the person just died yesterday so try to be nice try to be nice because you know don't be proud okay be very humble to me, if you're a makeup artist or if you render service in general, you need to be humble, you need to be friendly, you need to be very, 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 very friendly and smile all the time like me. <laughs> Sometimes I smile a lot though. Just try not to smile too much. Okay. 
<laughs> Another thing would be your appearance, okay? When you're going to a makeup job, you want to appear really, really nice. You want to look presentable. Because the way you appear, that's how people are going to take you. If you appear really like sloppy and you're not looking your best, not your best, but presentable, you know? But I sometimes try to look my best. <laughs> okay, so if you look presentable and then do not wear hair that's going to be like all over your face. Because before, I used to like go to makeup job wearing like center padding, all falling down, tongue in. Before when I go to makeup job, I used to wear this, my wig that I like center pad, long. And I have, I always make sure I coil and they're like, the coils are all over the place. So when I'm doing makeup, so when I try to do makeup like this, the coil is like, boom, on my face. I would always try to like, take the coil off my face, take the coil off my face, trying to do brows. And my, one of my hands is, trying to get the coils off my face and i'm trying to do brows i'm trying to do gele and the coils are like boom on my face so and it's always a struggle you guys so your appearance is very important try to wear something that's very comfortable your hair has to be very neat and tidy because this day when i go to makeup job i just prefer to tie my hair in a ponytail this ponytail or i have my hair tied me in a bun, you know, just tie it in a nice bond away from your face so that when you're actually walking, nothing is getting on your way, you're just walking very smoothly, you know, nothing is getting on your way, you know, and you don't have those clothes that's just gonna be like distracting, you know, dress nice and simple, you know, and you'll be fine. Appearance is very important. Where, oh my god, you guys, your shoes very comfortable shoes back in the days you guys when i go to makeup jobs i just gonna wear my shoes my sexy shoes like okay i want to wear some slaters but girl when you stand up for like one hour doing makeup mm -hmm. nobody's gonna tell you next time <laughs> nobody's gonna tell you next time now i just wear wedges i don't care wedges or flats that's it no fashion for me when I go away, no fashion, very comfortable. Things are comfortable, so I prefer to wear comfortable things now than fashionable things. You know, another thing is your makeup kit and makeup chair. So try not to take a lot of makeup to your clients. Okay, do not take a lot of products. Before, back in the days when I go to makeup job, I'll be like taking all my makeup kit, everything that I own. Everything that I own as a makeup artist, I like, want to take them to makeup jo jobs, you know? I always take everything to makeup job, just so people will know that, like, oh, I have a lot of makeup, you know? <laughs> Guys, please just take what you need. People don't need to know you have a lot of makeup. Just narrow your thing so you don't have a lot of stuff, you know, in your kit. Because sometimes when you have a lot of stuff, it's so just, it's so confusing as well because you don't even know which one to use because you have like different shades of greens, you know? So sometimes I take the base greens or two or three shades and you just don't take a lot. For foundation, you take the darker color, the very light color, then the in-between. So that if you have the very dark and the very light, you know you can always mix in between when you when you want to, like if you don't have the shade. So it's very, just very good to own a very light color and a very dark color. Very important. So anything you're buying, foundation, powder, concealer, always buy very light and very dark, then buy some in-betweens. Okay, very important to not take a lot of products there. Okay, and uh, your box, make sure the makeup kit you're using is very portable. Don't go with some gigantic uh, thing that is not gonna be like portable for you to carry around, you know. So you wanna go with something that is very portable that you can just put in your boots. When you get that, just take them down and just, you know, go to your makeup job. You don't wanna be like, carry like huge bags like, down from the boat you know <laughs> oh. okay the last but not the least guys those clients that want to be like kim kardashian okay they want to slay they want to have wing liner they want to have bone lashes and all of those they want to they, they want their face to be to be beat okay they want their face to be beat guys they come with these lovely pictures showing you this is how i want my makeup to look and you look at the pictures Okay, let's start, guys. They want to look like Kim Kardashian, but when you start doing the 
shadow they're already tearing when i do the liner they're like shaking like it they're all they're already blinking their eyes i'll be like when you know you have you can't even open your eyes why do you bring pictures that i have to like especially when you have you know this liner this nice clean liner for those kind of nice clean liner you need the client to be like this the eyes open like so so you can draw the line very neat and precise some of them they can't even open their eyes wide and they want their liner to be like clean so with makeup you have to like cooperate with a makeup artist for your makeup to turn out good because if the makeup artist say look up and you're not looking up you're looking down and they say look side you're not looking at and they say look at the side you're not looking at, you're not actually looking at the side and your makeup is not gonna look nice so guys this is always a struggle it's always a struggle when people cannot bring you oh i want this wing liner cut eyes then you want to draw the wing liner mm. they can't even stay still you know what are you gonna do mm. then you try to manage to draw the wing liner and everything just look messy and they're like oh but this is not how this person's gonna look like i'm like rah and i'll be like rah what am i gonna do now so mm, that is a big struggle they want to look like King Kardashian and they don't want to scrub their face before the day. Their face, they don't scrub their face. They have dead skin on their poor face. This is why I always offer them. I always tell them to scrub their face before the event because you need to scrub the dead skin out for your makeup to look good. The overall, the overall final, the final, the, your final look will depend on the base itself. Okay, so yeah. And do not forget those ones who want their brows to be thick. They're like, well, I want big brows. I want big brows. Even though the big brows don't really suit them, they want just on their brows to be big. With brows, it depends. Brows suit different people. But some people kind of like, I want that shape. I want that shape. And maybe that shape don't really suit them. Or maybe their face shape is not actually suitable for their brows. But say they want the brows or, you know. Guys, my advice would be, if you're doing those right that those clients that they tear up maybe you should do the shadows first do the eyes first just so when they are tearing you can always clean that before you actually do the foundation because sometimes when you do the foundation they, are tear, they start tearing then that's gonna be a problem for you and then when the lashes you have to look down and you can just pop the lashes while the eyes is closing because sometimes when they open their eyes they can just they, can, they always have to be shaking and the lashes will not stay the eyelashes will not stay because they can shake it so maybe they should close their eyes they pop the lashes in then for their brows you try to kind of sculpt it make it look bigger for them but trying to make it subtle at the same time you know what i mean so, so when you actually want to do the liner you are going to look the other way so you can see the so you can do the wing liner so they look the opposite direction while you do the wing liner so always good to have them to look to the opposite direction okay so with bridles with bridal jobs most times it's always good to keep the makeup nice and simple you don't want to go crazy with the makeup you want to keep the makeup nice and simple because at the end of the day these pictures are going to last forever even when there's no crazy makeup so this is why you have to keep the makeup nice and simple so that the makeup or their pictures gonna age or gonna live longer Cause what I mean live longer is this: when you take a picture and you have done this crazy makeup, and maybe after five years this makeup is not in vogue anymore, those pictures are gonna look crazy. So this is why you have to keep the makeup very simple and very subtle, so the makeup is gonna look up to date. You know what I mean? Being a makeup artist has some fun part as well, you guys. Let me tell you. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm you get to enjoy parties. You know, you go to parties every Saturday. You know where you get to dance. You know and then you get to eat jello fries and some pounded yam you know especially when you're going to a nigerian party you're going to sometimes you get to eat different foods depending on the kind of weddings you are going to sometimes you go to zimbabwe wedding then you eat some zimbabwe food some Ghanaian food some uganda food you know just eat different foods every saturday guys that's really nice that's the fun part we can eat and dance and enjoy yourself okay guys i'm gonna leave here if you have any question any contributions i know you guys are gonna have contributions anyways so 
put them down in the comment sections so until next time bye bye <laughs>